Hi, this is Geshe Michael Roach, and we're coming back to our mini video series about six different kinds of frustration uh, that I feel about time. And then we're trying to talk about solutions that can give us a better relationship with time, where time is working for us, and it's not giving us pressure or making us feel stressed out. And the next uh, frustration I have here you can see these guys eating dinner together. It's a Christmas dinner. And in fact, uh, this week, I've been negotiating with a hotel uh, about me and Veronica's, uh, we want to have a wedding dinner. So we were supposed to have a big wedding uh, ceremony at a nice hotel. And we even paid a lot of money. And then COVID came. And finally, we had to have our wedding, you know, just with two or three people uh, because of the COVID last, last July. And, but we thought, you know, well, we still want to have this nice wedding dinner, this kind of wedding celebration. And we also wanted to, we kind of wanted to do it on Thanksgiving because that's when we met each other 52 years ago. And we thought it would be nice. And then we thought it would be a nice chance to thank all of the people that we work with because we all work together very hard. And we made a long list. I think it's going to be 60 or 70 people just in this area. Why am I talking about that? Uh, we were trying to set, in fact, this tomorrow morning I have to call back. And they said, well, how long do you want this dinner? And we said, two hours. And then the, the lady in charge of the hotel, she called me. She said, look, uh, Michael, uh, two hours is not enough to have a nice dinner with your friends. You know? And I said, wow, it seems like a long time. And she said, no, there's a funny thing about when you're really enjoying yourself with your friends you know, and, and you're, you sit down and celebrating Thanksgiving together, and, which is we want to thank each other for existing and being in our life. And they said, make it at least three hours. And I think this is my other frustration about time, is that when I take time to enjoy uh, a meal with a close friends or something like that, and we go, we go to this Italian place, right? And we sit outside under the trees, and then suddenly, it's time to go home. And then I'm like, wait a minute. Uh, that was too fast. The time went too fast. You know, that's, that's one thing, right? And then there's meetings with your accountants. Next picture, Stacey. Or there's meetings with friends who want to tell you their problems for three hours, four hours. And they start telling you over and over again the same problems. The lady on the left, I don't know, maybe it happens to you. Her friend is talking about this boy she met. And, you know, at first they're having a good time. And then later they start having problems. And this lady on the right, she talks about these problems with her friend two times a week, three times a week. And the time goes incredibly slow, okay? Like you have other things you want to do. You want to be polite. And you want to be compassionate. You know, you want to listen to your friend's needs. And, but it just seems sometimes like someone's complaining or someone is repeating the same thing every time you meet them about some problem with their relationships or something. And then, I don't know if you get this feeling. I, I'm guessing you do. But time just seems to slow down, you know? Like, it's, it feels like they've been talking for an hour. And you look at, the, at, at your, you know, you look at your phone, and it's only been 10 minutes. And you're like, what? You know? <laughs> So I think the next frustrating thing about time, and let's face it, it doesn't go at the same speed. You know, when you're having dinner with some good friends, it just seems to rush by, the time rushes by. 
And then, you know, when you're sitting and someone's just repeating uh, some personal problems they're having over and over again, it seems like the time just slows down and it's, it feels like torture. Is there a solution? Can we fix it? And I have the guy in the, this is Mr. Einstein. I like him because uh, he did uh, teach at Princeton also. He, was work, he worked at Princeton. He owned a house on Mercer Street, which is close to where I used to live. And uh, he had this idea, okay? And he said, you can slow down time and you can speed up time. And oftentimes, he would talk about it as bending time. You can bend time. If you bend time, it goes slower. And if you can unbend time, then it will go faster. And I was so fascinated by this idea, you know. And, and this is what DCI does. This is what we do at DCI. We take these great ideas. Oftentimes, they're ancient ideas, and sometimes they're modern ideas. We take great ideas from physics, or we take great ideas from ancient philosophy, and we say, is there some solution here that we can use to change how fast time goes? Can we bend time to slow it down? And can we unbend time to speed it up? Can we slow down? time when we're with good friends and we're having a nice dinner and we're relaxing, you know. And then can we speed up time? I don't know, when we have to do accounting work or taxes or something boring, uh, listen to the problems of a person who repeats the same problems. You know, can we speed up the time? And Einstein said, yes, you can. And uh, I don't know if you, I love this picture of Mercury going around the sun. And you have to understand something about Einstein. Uh, as I understand it, uh, he got most of his great ideas in 1905. So he was young, relatively young, and he was not in a laboratory. And he was not in a university. He was sitting in a patent office, you know, registering new inventions of other people, probably just a clerk, really. And sitting in that office, I guess it's in Switzerland, day after day, he had ideas about how fast does time go, you know. And you and I, you know, we think, oh, Einstein, you know, he's so smart. It's not like Einstein can come to my house and teach me how to slow down time when I'm having a nice dinner, you know? It's not, but he can, and he did, okay? He taught us how to bend time, and it's an amazing idea, and we're gonna talk more about it in the free invitation event we're gonna have coming up. We're gonna talk more about Einstein's idea of bending time, because you can learn to bend time, you can learn to slow down time. And I do it. I do it every day. Uh, I've learned how to do it. And I have huge businesses all over the world. Uh, and I have, I don't know, my time is nice. When I want the time to slow down, I can make the time slow down. When I want the time to speed up, I can make the time to speed up. And isn't this a better kind of time management? Let's go back to Mercury, Seiji. <laughs> this is uh, the smallest planet, that little dark spot. And it's going around the sun. And because it's close to the sun, then the light coming off of Mercury, bouncing off of Mercury, and coming to Earth is slowed down. Okay, And when you see that black dot, of Mercury, because the light has been bent, you are actually looking at Mercury as it was a few seconds ago. You see, you aren't watching Mercury now. You're watching Mercury 
as it was in the past, and the time has slowed down. Okay, the time has slowed down. You, we, can, we are going to learn how to use this same principle to keep a Thanksgiving dinner going for much longer, and to enjoy it, and to enjoy it. Okay, you can learn to manipulate time, and you don't have to be a, a slave of time. Okay, we can we can have time work for us. Okay, now in the next video. We're going to talk about macro projects, long-term time, time over five years, time over 10 years, time over 20 years. There are some things that we have to do in our life that take 10 years or 15 years, like buying a new apartment or buy, you know, buying a home. This is a long-term project. Can we learn to change time over many years? and do these big, big projects and get them done. Okay, we'll talk about that in the next video. See you then.